Okay, so next on our list is uh, Dennis Ravlidge. Now, Dennis is the Nurses and Midwives Association New South Wales rep, and he's been negotiating on behalf of um, nurses at Mona Vale and Manly Hospitals. Um, he also has a few insights into what's going on with the new hospital at Northern Beaches. So, uh, thank you, Dennis. Thank you everyone and it's uh, tremendous to be able to speak to so many of you. Uh, as has been indicated, the association uh, represents nurses and midwives of the state. We've been involved in this process for quite some time and we share your frustration in relation to the paucity of information that we've been able to obtain at various times during this process. And we need to remember that this isn't something that just happened overnight, that they're struggling to get information for. There's some excuse for them in that they've not had a sufficient time to plan for this. Uh, obviously, the film that you saw goes back to the long history of it, but this was first announced officially that they would do an expression of interest on the 2nd of May 2013, over five years ago. And here we are in a hall in Motorvale, still struggling to find out about the services that you'll be able to access at Monavale Hospital, it simply isn't good enough. Now, HealthScope was announced as a successful tender in October 2014, nearly four years ago. And since that time, we've had a number of ongoing discussions, both with the government, the Ministry of Health, and HealthScope, trying to ascertain not only the staffing and the, and the welfare of staff at Manly and Monavale, who may go to the Northern Beaches Hospital, but certainly what services would be left at Manly and Monavale. The answer for Manly was easy, none. Uh, but for Monavale, it's not much better, and I'll get to that in a second. And at the time of these announcements, there was an impression attempted to be provided, I think, by the government that, well, even though it's run by HealthScope, it's, it'll be the same as a public hospital. It's just that they're kind of looking after it for us. They're building it, and it's going to be built quicker and the like. But let's be clear to everyone in the community here, HealthScope Health itself has clearly put to us and made known to us that there's no ambiguity. The Northern Beaches Hospital will be a private hospital. It just will happen to also treat public uh, patients as part of its contractual terms with the government. It doesn't consider itself as some form of public hospital by another name. The local health district that currently provides you with the services through Motorvale will simply become a purchaser of public health services or episodes of care at the new hospital. It will be the same as buying and selling a car. That will be their investment and interest in the provision of public health in this area. But anyway, four years after the announcement of HealthScope, um, what can I at least try to confirm to you about the services that will be left at Marnival? And this has been the subject of some recent discussions that we've had both with the local health district uh, and uh, HealthScope itself. Some of this won't be of a surprise, but I'm, I might be able to provide some information that will put into context the significance of the change that this will mean for those of you that live uh, in, in these environments. So when the announcement was initially made, there was all, always some suggestion about certain residual services remaining uh, at Monavale. What that means is that all acute services will be gone. So what will be remaining at Monavale is those things that the uh, government or the local health district has defined as being non-acute. So in other words, these are an existing 56 beds that are dedicated to assessment and rehabilitation. So they are existing beds, they will remain, but that is not a health service. Yes, the community health centre and hydrotherapy pool and the community palliative care unit will also remain. That is of course important, but that does not make a hospital. There has recently been announced that they will also perhaps commencing to, uh, construction uh, in, the, in the near future, 10 beds for inpatient palliative care unit and 10 beds of the geriatric evaluation and management unit. All of these things are important. All of these are significant services for the community, but they do not add up to a public hospital that you currently have. And then there is the urgent care centre, which will be established 
uh, when the emergency department closes at the end of October 2018. So let's be quite clear what this urgent care centre is. It is not an emergency department. It is simply, as has already been said, essentially to access the services of the, of the urgent care centre, you will need, to all know, will need to be able to walk in. No ambulances will be transporting any of the community. Despite the level of care that they might require, they will not be transporting anyone to the urgent care centre. They will progress directly to Northern Beaches or Raw North Shore, depending on the situation that you find yourself. So we'll see. You will need to almost self-assess as to whether you think you will require admission to the hospital because if you think that you might require admission to a hospital, you best not go to the urgent care centre because they will not be uh, able to deal with your situation. So what's the practicalities of that? Now we understand from information uh, from our members and, and in, from other sources that the Motorvale Emergency Department currently now deals with anywhere up to 80 or 90 presentations a day on average. There's obviously some fluctuations between winter and summer, but about 80 patients per day. And 30 to 40 of those require admission each day following the presentation in the emergency department. One third of those, on average, are babies and children that require and act seek services currently provided at the emergency department. As you will see, all that will significantly change with the introduction of an urgent care centre. The urgent care centre is, is predicated on seeing something like 30 odd patients a day who will walk in, or 30 community members who will walk in and seek the assistance for the sprains and strains and yes, they'll be able to take an x-ray to establish whether, whether your child playing sport has broken their leg uh, in football or the like. But they will not be able to do the subsequent care that, that will be required. Now that is no reflection of the doctors or the nurses that will be working there. It is simply that it is not staffed or designed or meant to provide you with a continuation of the care that you currently receive. The urgent care centre is uh, on a 24-7 basis, for now. Um, we've uh, been provided documentation that indicates that the service will indeed be 24-7 for the first 12 months, and then they'll review it and see whether that really is required to be maintained, dependent on the demands on services. So again, we have a proposition where they establish a service that can't really enable a proper provision of service to you. Inevitably, the community will then seek and be herded towards the Northern Beaches Hospital, and then they will be able to, in 12 or 18 months' time, review the statistics and say, well, maybe it doesn't need to be open at night. Maybe it doesn't need to be open at all. Uh, we don't know. That is, that is speculation on my part, but it's fair to say that in other hospitals or locations where an urgent care centre has been established, they don't often last very long. Now this has been, uh, I can only imagine, a frustrating process for the community. It's been a frustrating process for those that, have, that work currently at Manly and Monavale. Some of the frustration of, of the nurses and midwives at work at those two hospitals uh, flared up some months ago and nearly led to, to essentially industrial action and strike action. Uh, we've taken our concerns uh, recently to the Premier because I think you might recall uh, there were a number of articles in the local paper that she's a manly girl, that she was born in manly and she's very familiar with the environs here. So we thought that she might want to have an interest to hear about the concerns of nurses and midwives about the change to the Northern Beaches Hospital and the lack of services that would be provided or left behind. Um, she declined our invitations to me. And I guess just in case we were under any illusion about uh, what the Northern Beaches Hospital is designed to do, yes, it will be a state-of-the-art uh, state hospital. There's no question that any new uh, facility that benefits the community is welcome. Uh, we can only agree that a level five is, seems to be manifestly less than what the community deserves. Uh, but even in the literature that 
um, that HealthScope puts out, that LHD puts out, and, even, and indeed included in some of the job descriptions for non-nursing positions. So some of the positions that have been recently advertised at uh, HealthScope to be at the Northern Beaches Hospital, one of the essential criteria was to have experience at working at a five-star hotel. <laughs> one wonders, one wonders. Um, because clearly uh, they will be providing services to public uh, patients paid for by the government, who otherwise would have been providing those services in any event. Uh, and surely the provision of a public health service to the community is one of the core tenets of any government to be delivering at any time, rather than delegating that responsibility to any other provider. The private health system has a remarkably important role to play in New South Wales and Australia, but it shouldn't be in the substitution of public health services run by a government who is responsible to those constituents and to all the electorate of New South Wales. Thank you.